what would happen in the alternate storyline? We're talking a lot about alternate universes and whatnot in this show, uh, where PlayStation 4 was shipped with four gigabytes of RAM as Sony originally planned. Would it become a significant limitation uh, regarding the fidelity of last gen games? That's an interesting question because if we go back to, um, I guess it was 2012, early 2013, um, there were lots of uh, leaked specifications for Xbox and for PlayStation 4. And a lot of that was actually, it seemed to actually turn out to be linked to some sort of wide scale hack of Epic Games. I don't know if you recall that back in the day. Um, but the leak was that the PlayStation 4 would have all of this amazing GPU um, uh, power, uh, but um, it would only have four gigs of memory. And uh, I think when Mark Cerny took to the stage and announced the technical specifications of the PlayStation 4, you know, he just specifically said, oh, it's got eight gigs of memory. It kind of blew everything out of the water. But at the same time, you know, I was speaking to developers of PS4 games who were actually genuinely surprised by that revelation at the time. <laughs> so it was definitely a thing. I mean, I saw paperwork as also prior to that uh, that said it had four gigs of RAM. Alex, what do you think would have happened in this bizarre alternate timeline where the PS4 only had four gigs of RAM. Um, because actually it turns out that memory is really important uh, to kind of like the longevity of a system. Yeah, for them, they would have had really hard trouble in the later half of the generation versus Xbox One in some weird ways that you just haven't seen before. It would have really changed the dynamic up. I think at launch it wouldn't have mattered at all because uh, if you look at the original presentations, I believe by um, for the kill zone reveal, like they show that that they there were areas that could have been reduced texture quality, namely, and even launch games. If you look at PC, uh, all the multi platform stuff was doing fine on the really not too great seventy fifty Ti um, on the Nvidia yeah. side. Yeah, which, that's a good point. Which how many gigs of RAM is that? Two two so and the other system ram to fall back on but the whole point is uh that i think in the early gen it wouldn't have mattered so much and de developers could have gotten around it in a lot of good ways it would have been such a big it still would have been way better than what you had on ps3 um but as gen went on and uh more large scale open world games started to become more popular uh just like th this is like it was console defining almost like large scale open world games things like horizon i really think would have struggled to keep their fidelity uh like the uniqueness of different biomes in that world uh you know loading would have also become longer compression would be more important um yeah i think it would have really really hurt them uh for the game styles that were being developed more towards the latter half of the generation uh so yeah that would have that would have been nuts. It would have been more interesting, but it, it, just from like the historical perspective. But I'm so glad that they got the extra four at the end. Yeah, the platform comparisons would certainly have been interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember speaking to Ooh, people yeah. at Microsoft back in the day, and they too thought that. Um, I mean, there was obviously internal concerns that Xbox One was significantly uh, trailing PlayStation Four in terms of GPU performance, but. You know, they had that eight gigs of memory, you know, that had been quite a big thing for them. And then for the reveal to happen and for PlayStation 4 to come out to say they had the same amount of memory, that was when things uh, uh, got real, so to speak. Uh, John, any <laughs> thoughts on that? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the situations like even with the PS five like where we heard about the jaguar based ps5 there was the early ps5 dev kits that didn't have ray tracing hardware things like that you know where it's like stuff clearly changing the the direction of it which kind of also makes you think about just leaks in general but also maybe leaks can have a positive benefit as well like i really wondered like for the ps4 situation did some of those leaks and discussions around that ever like come back to them in a way where they're like, oh, maybe this is maybe this is a bad idea kind of thing? I, I did ask Mark for eight gigs. about it, and he and? just said we we took on board feedback from developer. He never actually acknowledged that it had uh -huh, four gigs uh -huh. of memory to begin with, but That's... he did say that um, that you know they taking on board feedback from developers was one of their primary things. And I think, in fairness, that 
strategy has paid off big time for them. Hey, Microsoft did that. They admitted publicly for the 360, if you remember, which was going to have 256 megabytes of RAM. Mm -hmm. And then Epic was like, nobody get put that 512 in there. (laughs) There was also another interesting thing from back in the day from uh, PDFs I saw. Uh, before the PlayStation 4 was revealed, where uh, some of the CUs on the PS4 GPU are actually going to be reserved for physics, which I thought was kind Whoa, of nuts. Wow. Yeah, that never came physics to pass. Physics is back, baby. I mean, <laughs> oh, and now it's not. There were rumors of, like, I think uh, some sort of porting of physics engines to, like, the late PS3 era that I remember reading about. I'm curious if it has anything to do with that, uh, but that would have been cool. 